Good evening, everybody. I say good evening. Anybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We don't be paying attention to you, boy. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, uh, you know, I, I was just thinking when I, when I looked at this here, uh, there, was a, there was a congressman that said there was a little island somewhere, and he's afraid if everybody rushed to one side of it, he'd flip over and dip into the ocean. Yeah. That's kind of what we got going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good to see everybody that came out, and this is certainly a beautiful day. Gorgeous day. We had a good uh, service, I think, last night. Been great. Uh, looking, looking forward to another one tonight. Just like it. We don't put too much pressure on him, but we're looking forward to a real good one tonight. As well. <laughs> He's got big feelings. Yeah. He probably, say, he probably say the best for last, didn't he? Yeah. You got a song? Come on, let's sing a song. Get started here. You lost in 316 tonight. 315. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Three sixteen. Jesus saved your pilot me over life's tempestuous sea, unknown ways before me roll, hiding rocks and treacherous shoals, chart and compass came from thee Jesus Savior pilot me as a mother steals her child thou canst touch the ocean wild boisterous waves see what it does to it. They haven't really tested yet to see if it's cancerous or benign or not. Yeah, buddy? Yeah, um, Gene, and I got to take Mark to the hospital Friday to, for that, that stone, and then Pat did get her results today. She's got a mass on her uh, pancreas, and I can't remember what she said about her liver, but she's got some issues with it also. She said she had sclerosis of the liver. You know, I mean, I've heard of people that don't drink, haven't they? She anymore. never drank. Yeah. No, I never <laughs> have. My mom. So did my dad. That's, yeah, I've heard of people having it before system. that never drank it at all. And that's, you know, that's the first thing they asked her was, was you a drinker? And she said, no, I never. 
And then the doctor said, well, I have seen people with, you know, that don't drink alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's just weird. I've heard of it a couple of times. You don't expect it, but. Uh, no, she didn't. Yeah. Yeah. You certainly don't expect that. Well, pray for her, of course. Amen. Everybody. Absolutely. Did somebody else have their hand up? Stan Stanley? Me and my prayer list. Okay. Did you, have, did you also? Somebody over here? Well, I'm looking over here. It looks like, it looks like people <laughs> raise their hand over here when I'm looking that way. We see uh, Sister Geneva's not here, so we'll ask a prayer for her, too, of course. And, uh, yes, ma'am? Me and my family, especially the unsaved ones. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, I, I know you said you and your family and then uh, those lost and stuff. Okay, yes. that's what I thought you said. Larry? My neighbor, Jill, <clears throat> lives right above me, uh, had to be taken out of her apartment today and rushed to the hospital for her heart. Uh, even though we don't get along sometimes, I'd like you to pray for her and mom and uh, my family. Pray for my kids and grandkids, please. All right. Amen. Keep those prayer requests in your heart, of course, and your thoughts. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, well, let's go ahead and bow. And Larry, we'll go ahead and ask you to pray for us then, if you would. <coughs> dear God, once again, thank you for opening these great doors today, dear God, and letting us come out and be with you, dear God. I know, dear God, that uh, you made a way for us to communicate with us, and it's doing my prayer, dear God. And we do thank you so much that you opened the gateway so we can bring our petitions to you when we need to, dear God. <coughs> Take care of the uh, prayer request that you hear in your will. If your will be done, dear God, you don't have to worry about anything else. <coughs> dear God, we ask that uh, you make this little church come back to where it used to be, dear God. Let it grow. It could be that great will. Uh, let it stand in this community as a place to turn. Yeah. Needs Jesus, dear God. Yeah, absolutely. You pray the most of it, dear God. Yeah. Dear God, if there's any children out there sick, scared, whatever the one is, dear God, please. Examine that, and again, dear God, put your will to it. Uh, the little kid out there is suffering today, dear God. Give him some kind of relief, dear God. I pray that. And, uh, my heart belongs to the kids in this world. Uh, dear God, we do love you. Uh, we do ask that you run this uh, meeting today. Uh, <coughs> your standards and your will, dear God. Please favor us in that blessing. We ask in Jesus' name, dear God. Amen. 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 <laughs> All right, for those on the video, we are uh, New Macedonia Baptist Church at uh, 12th and Central in Newport. We do have uh, evangelist uh, Phil Skipper and his wife, uh, Barbara, with us today. And without further ado, we're going to have him come on up. Amen. Let's see if I can get up here about throwing my back out like I did last night. Amen. Just take your time. That's a good idea. I, uh, thank you, Richard. Appreciate that. I remember years ago, I heard a preacher that was. Uh, getting ready to preach like I'm fixing to do, and he was talking about the stages that we go through in life. And, uh, and he said they can, they can be uh, numbered at about seven, and he said we kind of come into this life, amen, with uh, spills, and amen, knocking stuff over, and knocking our cup over, and then he said the second stage of life when you get in school is characterized as drills and uh, yeah I did that again the other night knocked a cup of soda over at the house amen and uh, but then you get you get in school and you you go through drills and you're learning the multiplication tables and the alphabet and then you get into your teenage years and he said you can characterize that stage of life as thrills because you're looking for something exciting and then you grow into adulthood and get married and and then you realize life can be characterized with bills. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. And, uh, and then you get a few years on you, like some of us, and you're experiencing some ills. Yeah. And then you take pills. <laughs> yeah. Amen? And then finally, the last stage of life is wills. And I'm not quite there, but, <laughs> but uh, certainly am grateful and, and uh, appreciate the goodness of the Lord. If you take your Bible tonight and join me, in uh, the book of Isaiah, and chapter number six is where we're going to be tonight. Isaiah chapter six. I do want to thank you for how kind you folks have been to us. And appreciate you folks being here on a Tuesday night. The Lord gave us a pretty day. Yes. And I certainly am grateful for that. Amen. I found me a barber today. Got my hair cut, my ears lowered. And been needing to do that for a while. 
Amen. And uh, the good thing about being a guy is if you go to a barber, you're just a few weeks from amen, having to get another haircut anyway. <laughs> so not quite as critical for us as it is for the for the women folk, but but uh, found a barber down in Covington that was able to get me in, and I appreciate that. And if you don't like my haircut, don't tell me anything, because I'll you'll hurt you'll hurt my feelings. And, uh, amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter number six. And uh, when you have found that reference, let me ask you if you can and are physically able to stand. And we're going to read uh, about the first nine verses, and that's probably as far as I'll get a chance to preach tonight. But uh, the Bible said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. Thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Let's pray. Father, we bow in your presence tonight. God, we are grateful and thankful, Lord, for the blessing that we have once again on, a, on an April Tuesday. Father, to gather together in church and Lord, thank you that there are still places dotted across our landscape, God, that still believe in holding meetings. Amen. God, still believe in striving for revival. God, asking you to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And Father, tonight we come, Lord, seeking your help, God, seeking your favor, and God, asking that, Lord, you would examine us. God, you'd show us what you see when you look at us. And Father, I pray that as we look at this text and God, we examine that which you have written for our admonition. And Father, I pray first of all that you give us ears to hear. God, what you would say to each individual tonight that has made up the congregation here at New Macedonia. Father, I pray that you'd open our eyes that we might behold wondrous things out of thy law. And Father, I pray that we'd have hearts, God, that are willing and receptive, Father, to what you would do in us and, God, what you would speak to us about. And Father, I need your help tonight. Pray that you'd fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And God, that from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, that Lord, I might be a, an instrument, Lord, that you could use, Father, to help those that are here tonight. And God, those that will be watching, Lord, on the, on the internet, Lord, I pray that God, you might, Lord, somehow, some way, Lord, speak to them. 
Father, we love you and ask that you bless now. In Jesus' name, we make this prayer and we wrap it in expectation. Amen. You can be seated. So I'd mentioned, and I, again, I don't, I don't want to continue to go back to when I had COVID, but that's kind of been a significant happening in my life and in our life. And, and uh, I've worn glasses for some time. I've needed some kind of a corrective lens, and I really probably the unusual man of my age or adult of my age in this room tonight because I don't need them to see up close. I can read fine, Josephine, without my glasses. It's distance that I need and it just makes things crisper. I can see everybody out there. By the time I get back to Larry, I start losing features. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Especially by the time I get back to Buddy. Amen. But can't see expressions and can't see how homely he really is. But but uh, all kidding aside, so so I've always worn some type of a corrective lens. But but I but I found when I was hospitalized with COVID that that uh, because of the massive doses of medication that they were giving me that my vision, and I had made mention, I think last night, that I, I couldn't read my Bible if it was written in boxcar letters. I just couldn't. And again, I wanna, I wanna remind you how important this book is in your life. Because this book will do for you what no other book will. Amen. 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 By the way, you need to be, you need to be aware that, that the devil also knows this book will do for you what no other book will. That's why he's trying to get this book out of your hand and replace it with something they say is easier to read. Yeah. Yeah. Easier to understand. Somebody say amen. Yeah. And uh, I had a conversation with somebody today on the phone and that subject came up and I just said, listen, I, 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 I've been a, I, I, I've, I've had a King James Bible in my hand Amen. Since the day I got saved, I might have had one brother before I got saved because I had we had Bibles around as amen as youngsters. I don't know that they were King James, but I suppose that they probably were. But I've had a King James Bible in my hand, Larry, since May the eighth of nineteen seventy-seven, and I'm too far along in this thing called life and eternity to change now. That's right. Yeah. Amen. I, 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 observation. I'm not preaching about this. Just just observation. They're not trying to do that to Shakespeare. They're not trying to make that Shakespeare easier to read. They ain't trying to do that to Plato or Socrates, amen. They just want to monkey with your Bible because they want to change doctrines that they don't like. And I'm just trying to tell you, you need to be real careful about that. And you need to be, you need to be, you need to have strong resistance to somebody that's trying to take your Bible away from you and give you something that they say is easier to read. Amen. So so anyway, that that being said, so so once I got out of the hospital and I recovered, I, I realized that the prescription that I had prior to going in the hospital, Brother Dale, was not, my eyes weren't responding the same way to it. So I, I was, we were back out on the road and I went and made an, made an appointment to have an eye exam. And uh, I went in to see the, to see the optometrist and, and uh, you know how they do, they set you down in the chair, they project that chart in front of you that's got you know, all those letters and you gotta try to read the smallest line and you do your best to try to guess at them and they can figure out when you're, not, when, when you're just trying to guess, amen? Yeah. Whether it's a C or an E and, and, and you really can't tell because they're, amen, they're just blurry. Yeah. And so then they put that, that uh, I don't even know what they call it, but they put that thing up down in front of your face and they start making adjustments, right? And uh, yeah, I've always, I, I've often thought, you know, with as much technology as we have now, listen, I can, I can take my phone and pull up an app and measure something, amen, with my phone, just by moving my phone, it'll get me reasonably close. I thought they ought to be able to tell me what makes me see better, but they still ask you the question. They put those lenses in there and say, this better or worse? And if you've ever had that process done, you know some of the changes that are made are dramatic. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like from not being able to see Larry to being able to see Larry better than I want to. <laughs> Amen. And then sometimes the changes are just so subtle that, that it's just a matter of being maybe a little bit more clarity or a little bit more sharpness. But I realize this, ladies and gentlemen, that, that little changes 
can make a big difference. Amen? That same thing is true in life. Amen? Making little changes can sometimes make a huge difference. So when I was getting my vision tested and I began, I, I, I'm, I'm the curious type and I like to know things. And so I began to ask, Brother Dave, what was it that makes our vision change? And I understand that there are some components such as age. And that was the first one that he mentioned that our vision begins to change as we get older. Amen. We don't see as well as we did when we were younger. I, he said he said that many times our environment I thought that was interesting what our, our surroundings sometimes will have an effect on our vision I won't bore you with the details but just to just interesting to me so when he's doing a retinal scan in my eye brother buddy he sees these little spots inside my eye and he said he said I got a question for you and I said sure and he said have you ever been around birds I'm like not really birds are nasty <laughs> amen i don't understand why people want to have them as pets but that's another story altogether but i said why and he said because you got something that looks like histoplasmosis that that is that is common to people that are around birds a lot because of the bird poop i guess for lack of a better term i'm not supposed to say poop from your pulpit but i just did two or three times now and uh and, and I, I said, well, I've, yeah, I've never really been around them any more than been just the average person. I don't make a habit of, amen, spend a lot of time where birds are, amen. And, uh, but, but, he, but he began to tell me that sometimes our surroundings, what we're around on a regular basis, affects the way we see. I'm right away, Josephine, thinking spiritual components here because there's a lot of truth here that sometimes we don't see things the way we once saw them because of the environment we're in or the places we frequent. Somebody say amen. And then he said this. He said a lot of times your physical health has a lot to do with your vision changing. He said, for instance, he said the reason your vision changed is because when they were giving you those high doses of steroids, your blood sugar, amen, was going crazy. And he said that has a direct effect on your vision. How much, how much glucose or or sugar is in your blood and I again I'm thinking as a preacher and I'm thinking man we sure got a lot of sugar-coated preaching in the day and age in which we live <laughs> amen and it affects how we see yeah. but this was something that I realized brother Larry as I was going through this whole process I realized that how I see will determine what I see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amen and it occurred to me that spiritually just like it's wise, and my doctor told me, he said, listen, you ought to have your vision tested and checked about once a year. Yeah. He said you ought to go in and he said you ought to be a scheduled appointment because your, your vision changes and you want to keep on top of that. And, and, uh, and I got to thinking, you know, that's probably the same thing true spiritually, maybe even more frequently spiritually. We need to have our vision tested on a regular basis. And so I got, I got to thinking about that as I was looking at this text because ladies and gentlemen, gradually we as Christians lose our ability to see things as we ought to. Amen. Right. I, I can't imagine, and, and listen, I, I, I'm not trying to interject Amen. The, the events of the day in the message. But I can't imagine how our parents would have felt if the events of today liked the guy or not, if they would have happened when we were children. Yeah. And I think because of the environment we are in, amen, and the things that are going on around us all the time and the constant bombard of confusion and and discourse is I, I think sometimes is affected the way we see things Amen. gradually we lose our ability as I said some some have some have a difficult difficulty seeing distance I don't know why they call that being nearsighted and some people have distance trouble seeing close they call that being farsighted but but I want us to look at this text tonight because as I was 
studying this portion of scripture, it became apparent to me, ladies and gentlemen, that, that really what's going on in these nine verses that I've read to you and hearing, really 12, 13 of them in the, in the chapter, is, is Isaiah is seeing things differently at some point than he did at a previous point. I want you to notice with me verse number one. The Bible said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Now let me just stop right there and let me give you the first thought that I had tonight. The first thing we encounter in the text tonight is a tragic situation. It's a tragic situation when anybody dies. Amen? Yeah. Saved or lost, it's a tragic situation. But when a person who's been in leadership and a person who has been in prominence and a person who's been in the public eye and people have looked to them for direction and comfort, amen, and security, that's what a king was, amen, a king was somebody who gave the people direction, he's somebody that provided the people security, he's somebody that the people look to for leadership and, and, and what, what's going to happen in their lives. And ladies and gentlemen, I began to realize that, that we have the passing of a human king. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of details about Uzziah, but there are several things that I think are interesting and lend to us having a better understanding of the text. Number one is that, that uh, there had not been another king like Uzziah since the king named Solomon. If you study Uzziah's life, you'll find that he was a very capable military leader. He was a very capable administrator. He began his reign as king at the age of 16. Must have been, 16 year olds must have been a good bit different than they, than they are in the, in the day and the hour in which we live, amen? But he began his reign at 16 and it lasted for 52 years. That's a remarkable tenure. He was an extremely popular king. His accomplishments are heralded as being wonderful because under his leadership, the nation of Judah had grown and, and they, had, they had experienced tremendous prosperity. Amen. They had they'd experienced peace like they had not had before and they had stability. Those are things that would be nice in our day and age. Amen. Amen. Peace and stability and prosperity. Amen. But the sad thing about Uzziah is that his life started off great and didn't end up so well. I'll be honest with you, Brother Dave. I don't know when I'm going to die any more than you know when you're going to die. But I do want to do my best to finish right. Yes, Amen. Amen. Man, I don't want to, I don't want to have, amen, spent, and that's not really the right term, it's invested. I don't want to have invested my life in the Lord's work and, amen, in, in the Lord's church and in God's people, amen, for the, for the majority of my life. And at the end of my life, time to do something that would disqualify or, or disappoint or somehow denigrate, amen, my testimony and the testimony of the Lord. And by the way, you ought to determine not to do that either. Amen. Most of us in this room tonight, as I'm looking around the crowd, are closer to the end than we are at the beginning. And I'm not trying to be morbid. I'm just trying to be honest. And listen, it ought to be our desire to finish well. Yes. Amen. Amen. King Uzziah did not do that because he got impressed with who he was and the position. And by the way, that, that's what happens sometimes to people in positions of leadership. It can happen to preachers. I've watched it happen. Yeah. Yes, it amen. Listen, I'm not above being challenged. Right. Yeah. I'm not above, amen, being questioned. Amen. And, and what happened was he ended, his life ended as a leper because he violated the office of a priest and intruded into an office that he did not belong in. Amen. He thought God had given him a pass and God doesn't give anybody a pass. Amen. But I, 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 notice what the text says. Pay, pay special attention here. The Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Now I'm not going to be so 
bold as to say that that Isaiah didn't know the Lord before King before King Uzziah died. But it's evident from the text that there was some component that when King Uzziah died that his focus got changed. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. He, he might have been looking at both of them, but he realized when King Uzziah died, there's one that he should have been paying attention to all along, the entirety of the time. The Bible said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Can I just say to you tonight that, that I, think, I don't think I'm doing the text an injustice when I say that there had to be somebody that God took out of the way in order for Isaiah to see God the way he ought to have seen God. So that begs the question. Is there anybody in the way between you and the Lord? Amen. Is there somebody that's kind of, and it may not be their intent, it may not be their desire. Sometimes we put people on pedestals they don't belong on. Amen. Sometimes we look at, at people, whether it be a man or a woman, we look at a human being, amen, in a way that we should not look at them. And because we're looking at them a certain way, we're not seeing God the way it ought to be. Here's the other thing I have to ask myself. Brother, have I gotten in the way? Right. Have I gotten in between somebody and their view of the Lord? Because I'll be honest with you, if I leave, if I leave New Macedonia Regular Baptist Church, and you folks forget who I am, there's no great loss. But if I leave New Macedonia, a regular Baptist church, and y'all forget who the Lord is, Amen. there's been a great loss. Oh, yeah. Amen. Nobody, nobody's going nobody's gonna to lose a whole lot if they don't remember who I am. If they don't remember my name and amen, if my life, if, if my life comes and goes and amen, there's no great fanfare and there, there's no great loss in this world that I, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if I've done my best, Brother Larry, to get folks closer to the Lord, then I've done my job. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Can I say not only do we see the passing of a human king, but I want you to notice the perception of the heavenly king. Because notice what the Bible said. He said, he said, in the year the king Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Notice, sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. <laughs> Can I just say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad I know who King Jesus is. Amen. 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 I'm glad. I'm glad I know who he is, Brother Dave, but I'm gladder, if I can use that term, that he knows who I am. Amen. 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 Yes, I'm glad he knows me. I'm glad he loves me. Amen. Brother, what's your name? I was talking to Matt Allen's father-in-law. Rick. Rick. I was talking to Rick. I did not know. I did not know their daughter was married to Matt Allen. Brother Rick introduced himself to me tonight and, and said, you, I understand you know Matt Allen. And I said, yeah. And he said, he's stolen stuff from me. <laughs> well, that's a strange opening, <laughs> Salvo. <laughs> You know, and the average Baptist is like, oh, really? Tell me more. Because <laughs> we make that a prayer request. Somebody say amen. <laughs> amen. A lot of gossip goes on in church in the form of a prayer request. Somebody say amen right there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so I, I, I said, how so? He said, he married my daughter, took her and my grandkids to Papua New Guinea. Yeah. I know exactly what he meant. We had that happen in our family and our daughter and I mean, grandkids went across the other side of the world to the Philippines, not too awful far logistically from where your daughter and grandchildren are. I understand that. Listen, I, I, I got, I, but I got to, I got to thinking about, I got to thinking about Brother Rick, how good it is. Listen, I, I know you, I know your, I know your son-in-law, I know your daughter, but listen, that relationship's not going to get me anywhere. But I'm glad I know the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, and notice Isaiah said he saw, he saw Jesus on a throne. Amen. Listen, something wonderful happened in the midst of a hardship, in the midst of a tragic situation. Isaiah, amen, gets a glimpse of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He sees him on a throne, high and lifted up. And ladies and gentlemen, can I remind you, can I remind you that the king of the universe, the king of glory, the king of heaven, amen, he's still on his throne tonight. 
tonight. Amen. And I'm grateful for that tonight. Amen. Amen. And I want you to notice, notice what he said. He said, I saw him high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. I got to thinking about that imagery. I'm sure when Matt and Becky got married, it was probably a beautiful wedding. And uh, she probably had a beautiful, I wasn't there, but I'm just supposing because I've had one daughter and she's gotten married and I don't know if the other one's ever going to find a guy or not. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother Rick mentioned to me that when he first met Matt, he tried to run him off, which every, every dad of a daughter tries to do. And if the rascal won't leave, then he might just be determined enough that he'll take care of her. Yeah. Somebody, if you can run him off that easy, you don't need her anyway. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter Brooke's worried about that whole prospect, and I'll run somebody <laughs> off, amen. But, uh, but anyway, we got, we got, I, got, I got thinking about the wedding. Man, that bride's got that beautiful dress on. She's got the veil on. But Brother Dale, there's something that follows along behind her called the train. <laughs> that just is her glory, amen. That is just something that follows along behind her to let everybody know how important she is. The, the wedding's not about the groom, amen? It's about the bride. But I got to thinking, man, one of these days, Brother Dale, that whole thing's going to be turned around. Because I'm telling you, in that wedding, we're going to all be part of up yonder. It ain't going to be about the bride, amen? Oh, the bride's going to be there because the groom loved her, amen? And it's going to be all about the groom, amen? But I got to thinking about, I got to thinking about that glory. And the Bible tells us in verse number two that these seraphim stood there, amen, with six wings and with two of them they covered their face and I thought about that brother Larry because their identity is not important amen doesn't matter who they are with two of the wings they cover their feet amen because there's our feet are nasty with two of them they flew but then they cried one to another look at verse number three and said holy 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 <laughs> and aren't you glad you got a God that's not just holy yeah. he's not just holy holy but he is holy holy holy. Amen. 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 I'm glad there's no fault in him. Absolutely. Amen. Nobody's going to find any counts to indict him on. Amen. Somebody say amen. Again, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, listen, I'm, uh, hey, every, every, every human being that's walked on the face of this earth, amen, if we got what we deserved, amen, if we, if we hadn't got, if we had not been recipients of mercy, we'd be recipients of judgment, amen, yes. and I'm telling you, if we got what we deserved tonight, we would not be sitting in church on a Tuesday night, amen, in, in uh, Newport, Kentucky, we'd have been in hell a long time ago, amen, and been burning in the charred walls of the dam, but our Aren't you glad we've got a God? Amen. Amen. That loves us in spite of who we are. And aren't you glad we've got a God? Amen. There's a holy God. Amen. 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 But I want you to notice. Notice what it says in verse number four. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. And there's some wonderful imagery that's here mentioned I've been doing a study on the tabernacle, and I don't want to get all bogged down in that, but I've been doing some study, Brother Dave, about the, once you get inside the courtyard, you actually enter the structure, the tabernacle itself. There's two rooms to that tabernacle. There's the initial room that you walk in, it's called the holy place. And then there's the room that's beyond the veil, that is the most holy place. That's where the Shekinah glory of God himself dwelt on that mercy seat between those, those cherubim that were on the ark. Yeah. Amen? But I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking, Brother Randall, as the priest makes the offering and then stops by the laver to cleanse himself to go in, yeah. when you walk in that, that, that first room, there are three pieces of furniture that are there. Immediately to the right, there's a table of showbread. That was, amen, the priest had to bake fresh bread, amen, every Sabbath and had to be replaced. There were 12 loaves there, yeah. arranged in two rows of six. Right. 12 speaks of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Yeah. Those two rows of six speak of the 66 books of your King James Bible. Amen. Yeah. And aren't you glad that God gave us bread? 
Amen. Aren't you glad? Amen. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hey, we, we aren't going to make it by just feasting on the bread of this life and the bread of this world. We've got to have the bread of the word of God. Amen. And aren't you glad it's fresh? Aren't you glad it's not stale and it's not moldy? Amen. It's not old. It's as fresh as the amen every every morning when you read it or every evening when you read it. It's just as fresh as it was the last time you read it. Amen. 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 And then I, exactly across the room from the table of showbread was the golden candlestick, yeah. and that was that was something that was to kept was to be kept illuminated all the time, meaning that the priest. The priest was always busy, Brother Dave, filling the oil. And by the way, it's the it was that it was that golden candlestick that shed light on the Word of God. That golden candlestick's a picture of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got directly in front between the two, but at, but in front of those two, or behind those two as you're walking into that room, you've got that all that golden altar of incense. I got to thinking about this, Brother Rick, because the way that tabernacle was constructed, the coverings and everything, there's no light from the outside bleeding in like they are through the, through the mini blinds on the windows here. Yeah. I mean, when you walked in there, it was pitch black dark, except for the light from the candlestick. Yeah. Also, that's a closed in space, Dale. And that incense on that altar is producing smoke. Amen. Notice what it said. The house was filled with smoke. I got to thinking about this, Rick. The, one of the great things about being a New Testament believer, Brother Buddy, is the Bible said that he's made us priests. Amen? And we can come boldly to the throne of grace. I don't have to go. I was down in Covington today, and the barber shop that I went to was right across the street on 6th Street from a big Catholic church. You know what those people have been told? They got to go through a man to get to God. I don't have to do that. Amen. Neither no, do they. No, sir. Amen. I go to God on my own. If I got a, if I got a burden, if I got a need, amen. Amen. Been praying for your granddaughter, Candace. Amen. I didn't have to go through a priest to get to God. I came to God on my own and said, Lord, there's one of your kids down here that's sick. Yeah. And if I, was, if, I was, if I was her dad, I'd do my best to fix her. And she's your child. Yeah. So well, that's bold. He said I could come boldly. Yeah. Didn't he? I'm not being disrespectful. No. Amen. Man, if it's my daughter, I'd want to fix her. I'd want to do something. I, I can't. Amen. Amen. Derek can't. Or, or, yeah, it's Derek, isn't it? Yeah, Derek can't. But her Heavenly Father can. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, but I got to thinking. I got to thinking. So the, the closer the priest gets to where the presence of God is, the more smoky the environment becomes. Am I right? You know what smoke does to your eyes when it starts to overwhelm you? Yep. It starts to make your eyes burn, which causes your eyes to what? Water. When's the last time you got so close to God? Now, I'm not just preaching now. I'm trying to get you to understand something. Yeah. When's the last time you got so close to God that it caused your eyes to water? Yeah. Amen? That it affected you in a physical way. Amen. The just, they've been watching some sad show about some heartache can't affect you. Amen. I'm just trying to tell you, listen, I'm, I'm thankful we've got, a, we've got a holy king. Amen. The proclamation of a holy king. But we see something in verse number five. He said, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips because I'm a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of a people of an unclean lips of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. I said, first of all, there's a tragic situation, but Brother Randall, the second thing I see here is there's a transforming vision. Amen. When that king Rick got out of the way, Isaiah not only saw the Lord, but he saw himself. Yeah. And getting a glimpse of the Lord will show you how really spiritual you are. Yes, sir. I have this premise, I don't think it's wrong. The one here tonight who thinks they're the closest to the Lord is probably not. And the one who thinks they're the farthest away might be closer than all the rest of us. Amen. Isaiah saw the Lord, he saw him holy. 
He saw himself. He saw himself as being horrible. Mm -hmm. Notice what he notice what he said. He said, "Woe is me, for I am undone." Mm -hmm. By the way, that wasn't his response at the end of chapter five. Yeah. That wasn't even his response at the opening of chapter six. Right. It wasn't Dale. It wasn't until he saw the Lord that he got a glimpse of himself. <laughs> Amen. It wasn't until he saw how holy Larry that God really was that he understood how unholy he really was. And his response wasn't, Woo! Man, I got to see the Lord. And his response was, Man, I am a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Woe is me. I am undone. For I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. You know what? Unclean lips spring from an unclean heart. I got saved in 77 and Brother Larry, I didn't grow up in church. I learned, I learned words that I should not have learned at a young age because I was in that environment where those kind of words that we don't use in church. Amen. And you shouldn't use anywhere else anyway. Yeah. If, if you shouldn't use it in church, you shouldn't use it anywhere else. Somebody say amen. Amen. So I just lost my temper. No, you didn't lose your temper. Amen. You just found you just you, amen. You just found a way to use use vile words and made an excuse for it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I I, I had I didn't grow up in that environment, so I, I'm at, I'm at church, and I mean Dale, that just kind of rolled off my tongue like any other thing would. Yeah. And I remember we was in Sunday school class. Uh -oh. <laughs> And I said something I should not have said. I wasn't aware of it the moment I said it. But a second after I said it, I was aware. Because yeah. everybody looked at me like, uh, all the oxygen left the room. Amen. You know what I realized? That sprung from an unclean heart. Amen. I, I'd gotten saved. But man, there was still a lot of filth in here that God had to root out of me. Amen. And God, amen, salvation doesn't fix everything. It's the start, amen. That, that salvaging process. I think of it this way. I, Brother Randall and I have talked about going to junkyards. And, and man, when a car is wrecked, they take it to the junkyard. And it's called a salvage yard because they pull all the parts that are worth anything off that vehicle. And when nothing else is, nothing else is there that's decent, then they go ahead and scrap it. And that's the salvaging process in our life. Amen. He saves us. Amen. Writes our name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. But then, that, then the process begins, Brother Dale, of trying to, amen, bring the good out of us that he might be able to try to help somebody else and get rid of the bad that might hinder somebody else's walk. Amen. 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 And I'm telling you, Isaiah saw himself and he realized, man, I am not what I thought I was. When I saw the Lord, I realized, man, I got a long way to go. And then he saw the people. He said, I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. Yeah. You know, see, how you see the Lord will, will, will affect how you see people. Mm -hmm. yes. It's easy for us when we are smug and settled in our spirituality. Yeah. Brother Jeremy, it's easy for us to get mad at people when they do things that sinners do. But that's just how sinners do. Amen. Yeah. And instead of getting aggravated at him, what we ought to do is we ought to, we ought to see him as somebody who needs the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, it's, it, it's easy for us to get all worked up about the folks that want to, amen, steal the rainbow and misapply it. But they need the Lord. Right. Amen. And I do believe there comes a point in time when somebody who's chosen that lifestyle, according to Romans chapter 1, Amen. After God has dealt with them and dealt with them and dealt with them, and they've said no, yeah. that He that He can and sometimes does give them over to a reprobate mind. I, yeah. I understand that. That's in your Bible. It is. Right. Yes, it is. Here's the problem, Dale. I don't know when that process is. Right. Right. Nobody knows. I've just got a responsibility to try to get him the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Not to try to be mean to him or unkind to him, say ugly things about him. Somebody say Amen. 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 We, I mean, we all grew up. We all grew up. We all grew up in the era when we had all kind of cute little words to say. Somebody say amen. We did. Amen. We, we all did. Yeah. Listen, this is one of the whitest churches I preach in. <laughs> amen. Everyone here is. This is one of the whitest cities I am in. Yeah. Amen. But I'm just telling you, we all grew up. We all grew up in the same era, with the same kind of epithets and the same kind of amen attitudes. Yeah. 
Yeah. You ain't gonna reach people that way. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. And so we're gonna if we're gonna reach people with the gospel, and aren't you aren't you glad the gospel's not exclusive? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, absolutely. He even saved people like us. Yes, Bible said, such were some of ye. Amen. 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 He saw he, he saw he saw the Lord when the, the king dies, he sees the Lord, then he sees himself. Then I want you to notice the last thing, and I'm done. Well, notice this. Verse number six. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he'd taken with tongs from off the altar. So again, you've got the image, because that altar is the brazen altar. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And a live coal, amen, a burning coal has been taken, Tanya, off that altar. Yeah. And that angel's got it. And the Bible says, and he laid it upon my mouth. Yes, sir. And said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I was a kid growing up, when I, listen, I still have PTSD from the smell of ivory soap. <laughs> <laughs> amen. 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 I, man, I... Rick, I ate bars of ivory soap when I was a kid. <laughs> Didn't kill me. Amen? But I'm telling you, I'd whole lot rather have a bar of ivory soap than a live coal from off an altar. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, hey, hey and, and I, I'm telling you, the imagery is the imagery's very rich here. And, but I want you to notice, I want you to notice verse number eight. And I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And this is the classic missionary text. Amen? And Rick and his wife, they understand what it is to have a daughter and grandkids that have, that have heeded that call. Yeah. But can I just tell you? A missionary is not just someone who goes across the sea. A missionary is someone who goes across the street. A missionary is someone who goes across the town. Yeah. Amen. A missionary is someone who leaves where they're at to go where somebody else is that has a need and meets that need. And I want you to notice we see we see a tragic situation. We see a transforming vision. But I want you to notice finally in verse number eight and verse number nine, we encounter a transformed volunteer because because what he saw when he saw the Lord and what he saw when he saw himself when that king finally was taken out of the way, resulted in something that changed in him, Brother Randall, yeah. for the remainder of the entirety of his life. Yeah. Amen? I want you to notice there's a divine request here. And by the way, I don't think it was just written to Isaiah or it wouldn't have been recorded in Scripture. Yeah. Amen? So the call is still going out, Who, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Amen. Apparently God is more than one entity. Amen. Who will go for us? There's a divine request. Listen, he's still looking for people to go. Amen. He's still calling people. He's still seeking people that will serve him. And then we see a divine, we see a distinctive reply. Notice what, notice what Isaiah said. He said, here am I. Send me. And then look, notice verse number nine, and I'm done. He said, he said, and he said, go and tell this people. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen, that that's where our responsibility ends? Yeah. We're, we're responsible to go, yeah. and we're responsible to tell. Yeah. Yep. That's what Matt and Becky and their family are doing yeah. in Papua New Guinea. That's what the missionaries this church supports. That's what my wife and I are endeavoring to do. We're endeavoring to go, we're endeavoring to tell. Amen? But we all go places every day. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? And we ought to be telling people with our mouth and, and telling people with our life, amen, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we live, the way we interact with people. There ought to be something about our lives that, amen, says to people that don't know the Lord, they got something I don't have and I'd like to have that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? And so our responsibility ends at telling. Their responsibility begins at trusting. Yeah. But the Bible does say, how shall they hear without a preacher? It yeah. does. Yeah. And I know we a lot of times narrow what a preacher is to somebody who's male and gender. 
But can I just say this? Every one of us ought to be preachers of the gospel. Right. Yeah. Every one of us ought to be missionaries. Yeah. Seeking to reach the people with the gospel. Amen. And so here's, here's the danger that we have right now. And I'm just going to be honest because we've known each other a long, long time. <clears throat> There's a lot of people that get their eyes, and especially after what happened today, a lot of people get their eyes on a personality. That's right. Amen. And can I just remind you, amen, he didn't and he, and he, and he won't fix everything. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh. Yeah, amen. That's amen. Exactly right. But he can. Amen. amen. And if I keep my eyes on him and keep my heart stayed on his word, mm -hmm. amen, and do my best, amen, as I'm ministering in this old nasty world we live in, to keep myself clean and pass by the laver, amen, amen, of the word of God and ask God to cleanse me and ask God to wash me <clears throat> and ask God to use me, there might just be a possibility, Rick, that when we get to the end of this thing and we get to see the Lord, it might just be a slim possibility that he might say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, not, <clears throat> I'm not looking for crowns on my head. <clears throat> I'll be happy. Not much else I like well done. Amen. Don't like my meat well done. Yeah. I mean, I like, I like my beef medium rare. Mm -hmm. If it's good beef, I like it blue rare. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like my eggs over easy. Went to breakfast with Dexter this morning. He, 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 likes, his, he likes his chickens murdered. <laughs> Amen. Well done. The yolk broke. All that. Yeah. I'm like, man, I've I got to have something to dip my toast in. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. But I'll tell you, there's a day, Terry, when I'm looking forward to hearing well done. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 I hope you are, too. Yeah. Can I say this? You're not going to hear that if you don't know the Lord. Amen. And and you might you, you might go to heaven, but you might not hear well done if you've got other people in between you and the Lord. Yeah. And so, as we've asked the Lord tonight to help us check our vision, how we're seeing things, because how we see determines what we see. Yeah. Amen. Father, we love you tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for these good folk. Lord, thank you for the opportunity that, Lord, you have given us and afforded us in the last few days to <clears throat> Lord, to spend some precious, valuable time together. <clears throat> and Lord, I, I, I trust that it's not been time that has been ill-spent. Pray that it's not been time that has been frivolously spent. But Lord, it has been time that, God, you could examine us. And God, we could examine you. Lord, we'll find no fault in you. Lord, nobody's going to accuse you of being anything less than you are. And Father, we're grateful for who you are. Amen. And God, thank you for loving us in spite of who we are. Lord, bless the preacher as he comes. And Father, I pray that God, you'd, you'd help us to keep our eyes and our minds stayed upon thee Amen. till the day that you call us home. And Father, for that, we'll bless you. Just before I conclude the prayer, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm going to ask Brother Randall to come here in just a moment. But I, I wonder... There might be somebody tonight. You'd say, preacher, somewhere in the message tonight, God spoke to me. I've allowed some things to get in the way. Maybe it's, maybe it's a person. Maybe it's things. Maybe it's just life and the struggles and the challenges of life. But somewhere, somewhere in the message, God, God helped me to get my vision fixed right. And here's my hand. Just want, just want you to pray for me that I'd keep my, I keep my heart right, my eyes right. And, my mind right till the day he calls me home. If that's you tonight. Would you just slip your hand up and let me see it? I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Maybe you know somebody who's lost. Got, got a family member, close friend, a neighbor, somebody that maybe you grew up with. You don't know for sure that they know the Lord. Would you, would you do your best to try to witness to them? So I don't know how. Well, just ask the Lord to help you. Invite them to church. 
But ladies and gentlemen, I, I, don't, I don't know what you see when you look at the world, but I see we're in a mess. And it's not going to be fixed by our changing our economy. It's not going to be fixed by changing our administration. It's not going to be fixed by amen, changing our technology. The only thing that can fix it is a relationship with the Lord. Yeah, right. Father, bless the preacher now as he comes. And Lord, thank you God again for these good folks. And Lord, thank you for their faithful support to my wife and I. In Jesus' name, amen. Preacher. Okay, I was thinking about that. I'm gonna need this next week. I'm not. I'm only gonna be a minute, minute or so here because I'm not. I don't want to uh, belabor anything that he said there because he had a, a very good message, and uh, I don't think I can really add to it anymore. Uh, today, I was just when he was reading that very first verse, and you think about God uh, on the throne. You think about uh, uh, you know the train and the smoke and. The, and you know, when, when you, you hear people with big voices sometimes, people can get up and they have thundering voices. But when God speaks, it's thunder and lightning and uh, you know, all, everything like that. Trumpets sound like trumpets blowing many waters. You know, God's just, he's, he's all powerful, you know. And that, that reminds me of that. When, he's, when Isaiah was up there looking at that, that reminded me of that. I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you all to stand up. I'm going to ask Phil and uh, Barbie to come up to the front. And I uh, want you to come around and uh, shake hands with them. And we'll thank them, and, and, and actually, uh, we might just, uh, the elders of the church and the officers of the church, might, we might just lay hands on them and pray if that's okay. Amen. And we might just do that. Let's do that first of all. Let's have, uh, let's have the elders of the church and the, and the officers of the church come up, and we're going to lay our hands on them. We're going to say a prayer with them. And then I want you all to come around and shake hands with them. And if you want to give them a buck or two for a, a Whopper or a Big Boy on the way home or something, that would be good too. Let's do that.